tonight, it's all about the Pro 12, as the Ospreys aim to return to the top four. These two teams are the most successful in the history of this tournament. They've won four titles apiece. Just one place and two points separate them in this year's competition. It's fourth against fifth, as the Ospreys and Leinster both look to boost their playoff credentials. Well, Sean Holly is in our analysis truck, as always, this evening. And, Sean, despite their last couple of defeats, the Ospreys have actually won their last ten in a row at home in the league. What do they need to do tonight in order to keep that run going? Well, two words about tonight's game, Ross, and that's must win. I think they need a bit of creativity in the midfield, personally. It's a tough Leinster side and midfield. No Ashley Beck tonight, and this time of year without internationals, you need your big sign-ins or your overseas to step up to the mark. One guy I'll be looking at, especially tonight, is Josh Matavesi in the midfield. The Ospreys like him, he plays a lot of game time. He has a good skill set, he has the attacking potential and a bit of flair. He can really take the line forward and cause problems and he can defend. Has a big hit uh, tendency like most Fijians. Uh, but he does have a tendency to sort of make some bad decisions, kicking the ball away when it doesn't need to be. And your big players, your key decision makers, you don't need 50-50 gambles, you need them to be consistent and you need them to be disciplined. A high tackle here late in the game against Lieburn, in the, again the Dragons game, you need them to be disciplined. He gets a little bit tired and makes some poor decisions. He's up against the wily old Gordon Darcy tonight. It's a nuggety, experienced Leinster team who are coming and they know what to do, Ross. They won't lie down easily tonight. Thank you, Sean. Let's have a word then from our analyst, Sean Holly. Well, one great opportunity in that first moment. You see the ball whizzing out here, and it's the second receiver, Dan Evans. They play off a second receiver. The danger when you play off the second receiver is you don't get too flat on the outside. Matavesi holds the wide defender, Dave Carney. All he has to do is pick Spratt, and it's too long and wide. That's a chance gone begging for the Ospreys. Well, Sean has been analysing the Ospreys in particular tonight, Sean, and perhaps sometimes just struggling a little bit at the breakdown and quite opposite I suppose on the day we find out that Sam Lewis is leaving the region. Definitely Ross, I think they're missing an out and out open side. James King has played a lot of rugby in the second row and a blindside flanker. He's not a traditional open side and when you play these Irish teams they go hard at the breakdown. Let's take a little look at what I've seen this first half. You know, it's not just over the ball, it's actually winning the ball. You can see how late and slow these players are to react. And when they get a sniff, Leinster, they're very selective. They'll go hard at the ball and steal it. You see it here as well. Normally, the flanker would come from the inside here. He'd run nil shape to the ball. Joe Beeman is late coming in. Dimitri Arhip has to deal with it. And Leinster are very, very good. And I think, you know, there's been zero turnovers won by the Ospreys in this first half. Look at Baker's technique. He's not really going for the ball. He's just clamping there. Somebody like Sam Lewis would have the savvy to win that ball. I think it's been zero turnovers won for the Ospreys. Four turnovers was one for Leinster that tells a story of the half Ross yeah the Ospreys definitely holding on to that ball towards the end of the first half there Sean going through multiple phases and they have had their opportunities as we said in attack just lacking perhaps a little bit of cohesion a little bit of just a cool head to finish them off they saved their best rugby of the half for the 40th minute they came from depth and they really ran on to the ball show and I think that'll be the halftime team talk in that changing room but up until then you're right you know they made a good break early on you see Scott Otten going through should really have made that pass there but it's quick ball that's generated and there's still some line speed coming from Leinster so they play off the second receiver Dan Evans the key here is you have to keep your depth outside they do a good job in the deep they have options outside him he just picks the wrong pass and it goes a bag in but again you know later in the half they're too flat on the outside Matavesi and Spratt you see here he's, he's just getting in front of Matavesi who forces the pass and it's another opportunity gone begging I highlighted Matavesi this was one of the few areas that he did come in nice controlled offload he's having a reasonable game but you said disjointed Ross take a look at this attack showing some innovation off a five man big Dan Baker good to see him back running and they're going to go same way they're going to go on a fold here with their forwards Roberts on the service only two men running they're late to this breakdown again and they want to go the same way look how many Osprey players are getting into that far channel and they go back to Matavesi so it's it's really showing a lack of cohesion in some areas of the game. It's easy to defend then. They got it back in the, in the, towards the end of the half. But look, again, James King, how late he is to this. This is the story of the half for me. He has to get there quicker, clean that out, and give his scrum half the front football that they got in the last minute of the half. That'll be the talk of the halftime. Let's bring Sean in and speak about the French thing. There's five changes for the French. Sean, a third of their side, including four 
in the backs. Is this looking like a slightly more dangerous French side to you? Well, to be honest, under San Andre and previously Libremont, I'm not sure they know what they're doing. You know, Philippe and, uh, and Mark Limont, they make too many changes for my money. Buster always out now, and the bench that came off in Ireland was particularly impressive in their ball carry. They've been reluctant to pick them, so I think the, 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 the key selection is Para at nine. If they can get nine and ten functioning, get their ball carrying forwards, yes, you're right, they're dangerous. But in all honesty, Ross, I don't think they're good enough to beat Wales. They're too organised Wales, too uh, defensive, and a better kicking game. Well done, Sean, an early prediction in there, good man. Yeah, Sean, that was the story of the first half, the story of the second half as well, as Mark says. Osprey's plenty of opportunities, plenty of time in the right areas of the pitch, just didn't execute well enough. Yeah, you've got to score tries at home, mate, and in these big games against Leinster, Munster and so on, it's going to come down to one or two Giltes chances. Two points dropped for me, Ross, but they had those chances in that second half. Matavesi was rightly man of the match. We highlighted him at the top of the, the show. And here he is now picking up a loose ball, a show and go. He hasn't got a real good pace, but he does get through into the 22. They make inroads into this department. And just from this build-up, Otten chooses to go on his own. And Leinster, as I said, half-time will pounce on the right one. It's a turnover. Again, Bevanen picks it up. He's got a bit of pace. Matavesi in vicinity again, but great hands from Jonathan Spratt and Dirksen. And Grabham look lively tonight. Two steps on the inside. And they now really should look to build a score. Score. Great options off San Davis, all different angles, causing problems for the Leinster defence, and they go for the three points, and that's as much as they got in that second half. So chances went a begging. They'll rue the missed opportunities, Ross, because with Munster and Glasgow playing each other, it was an opportunity to just get back in that top four.